Using suicide as a solution to illness undermines the willingness of doctors and society to show compassion and address patients' pain and problems. Human life is never a burden, and taking care of the people with illness should be the only solution. One of the biggest problems with physician-assisted suicide legalization is that it undermines patient and the physician trust. In an article posted by the Annals of Internal Medicine, Lou Snyder and Daniel Solsmi, are both doctors, say that legalization would undermine the patient-physician relationship and the trust necessary to sustain it, alter the profession's role in society, and endanger the value our society places in life, especially the lives of the disabled, incompetent, and vulnerable individuals. One of the most important critical areas of trust is between doctors and patients, and we should value life in all ways and not begin to put any pressure on people who are dying. Physicians also don't want to resort to a physician-assisted suicide. In a paper reaffirming the American College of Physicians, a uh, opposition to physician-assisted suicide states that the ACP and its members, including those who might lawfully participate in the practice, should ensure that all patients can rely on high-quality care through, through to the end of life with prevention or relief of suffering insofar as possible, a commitment to human dignity and management of pain and other symptoms and support for their families. Not only this, but a physician's role is as a healer. The American College of Physicians goes on to say that it finds ethical and other arguments against physician-assisted suicide to be the most compelling, including that the physician-assisted suicide alters the physician's role as healer and comforter and the medical profession's role in society. It affects the trust in the relationship and the profession. A physician's job is to heal and comfort the patients while they find the treatment that is best for each individual person. Offering their patients the option of suicide would be going against everything their profession stands for and can lead to patients having distrust in their doctors. Not only this, but many medical students who are studying, um, including Callaghan, Allen, Stahl, Brown, who all go to different medical universities, state that they believe that the dosing of medical the dosing of patients with lethal medications is inherently incompatible with the profession of medicine. If students who are studying medicine to become physicians disagree with the practice, they are upholding the values and doctrine that the Hippocratic Oath stands for, whether the words do no harm are explicitly stated or not. Not only is the sanctity of the physician and patient relationship threatened, insurance companies have already turned to physician-assisted suicide instead of offering treatment to their clients. Insurance companies are denying coverage and endorsing physician-assisted suicide. An article by the Washington Times states that a Nevada physician who was trying to transfer some of his patients to hospitals in California and Oregon uh, for procedures not offered at his hospital in Nevada said that representatives from two different insurance companies denied those transfer <coughs> requests by phone. And in both cases, the insurance medical director said to them, Brian, we're not gonna cover that procedure or the transfer, but would you consider assisted suicide? Is this how we handle the treatment of sick people? Insurance companies are already utilizing PAS and in the, in the states where it's already legalized. And the implications of a federal legalization could lead other insurance companies to express these levels of greed as well. It may be a cheaper way to end life instead of treating it, but we should never view human lives as dollar signs. Not only this, but the New York Alliance states that if assisted suicide is made legal, it quickly becomes just another form of treatment and as such, it will always be the cheapest option. This is a troublesome situation in a cost-conscious healthcare environment where we don't have a, medi a legalized medi or a universal healthcare. Oregon Barbara Wagner was denied coverage for her cancer tr treatment, but received a little letter from the Oregon Health Plan that stated that the plan would cover assisted suicide. Insurance companies are always finding ways to cut corners when it comes to saving money, and we all know how insurance is already expensive. My opponents argue for the peaceful option of death for their clients when it comes to barbiturates, but really barbiturates are not a peaceful death. Barbiturates do not assure a peaceful death. They are the most common substance used for assisted suicide in Oregon, and overdoses of barbiturates are known to cause distress. They don't work, a number of days can elapse before death occurs, or death does not occur at all. There's a failure of these drugs to induce consciousness, and while these while losing consciousness, there's been reported cases of people choking. Physician-assisted suicide is also problematic because terminal prognoses are often wrong. Individuals outlive their diagnosis by months and even years. Assisted suicide legalization leads people to give up on treatment and to lose good, day, good years of their lives. <coughs>